Hello, so my name's Michael Keneally and this is my part two video about the energies of September 2024, where I listed in part one four utter spiritual gems that are on offer to us, if only we can perceive them and work successfully. But this part two looks at the background energies. It's important to know what they are, and not least, it's important to know what they are because at least a couple of them are actually somewhat negative, could be difficult in our life, and could undermine or ruin our attempts to work with the special success potential energies which I listed in the part one video. Oh, there's a blog to go with these two videos, by the way. So the first planet I'd mention is the Sun. So the Sun transits Vedic Leo from September the 1st to the 16th. Now it's important that we're aware that Leo is king energy. It can give us leadership energy, ambition, thinking big confidence, vitality. Look out for that. Nurture it. Express it. Heal yourself if you notice you're being weak and not seizing the opportunity. Embody it, in other words. Use it for your best and needed ambitions. Now it's important to know also that it's the autumn equinox in September. This year it's on September the 22nd, <coughs> exact 1.43pm here in Ireland. The autumn equinox occurs each year and it marks the end of summer. Oh no, what summer? Have we had a summer? It never stopped raining. It marks the end of summer and the beginning of autumn. Now importantly it's the peak time for harvest. The harvest moon is given to the full moon that occurs nearest the autumn equinox. And certainly round here, the light of the harvest moon enables the farmers to work late into the night, helping them to harvest the crops from the fields. We can learn from that. So at this time, we need to identify and give thanks for the specific harvest we feel we have already received and reaped this year. And at this time, we need to make strong intentions for successfully completing the reaping in this harvest period. It's a wonderful and ancient one of the eight great festivals and indeed was anciently practiced here in Ireland you know, right back to the Neolithic, certainly, the first farmers who came from Anatolia, 4000 BC, you know, because the alignment of their monument reveals their strong connection, you know, to these festivals. Okay, now, just an important piece of information. It's important to know that Saturn is opposition the sun, this Saturn Sun opposition lasts from September the 1st to September the 16th. It's exact on September the 7th, with Saturn retrograde at 21 Aquarius and Sun at 21 Leo. You need to know that's there because Saturn's opposition to Sun can very much scale down the Sun's power to express himself. Watch that that isn't happening in a negative, subdued way, but more in a consolidated way. The positive gift of Saturn, you know, become the height of your sun, nevertheless. But in a thorough, consolidated way as you do things. Sun then enters Vedic Virgo on the 16th of September and sun ends September at 13 Virgo. Note that Neptune is opposite the Sun on the September the 20th, can be very visionary at its best indeed. And the Sun is conjunct Mercury on September the 30th. 
So the second of the background points is the Virgo pile-up. Absolutely do be aware there's a real pile-up of energies in Virgo by the 30th of September. These are Sun at 13 Virgo, Mercury at 13 Virgo, K2 South Node at 12 Virgo, Black Moon Lilith at 16 Virgo. My goodness. What a bombshell from the end of the month, for the end of the month. Certainly September does not get easier. So it's important to know that this Sun, Mercury, K2, Lilith conjunction is there at 12, 13, 16 Virgo at the 30th of September. check do you have planets in Virgo they will be strongly affected or in Pisces opposite check what house or life area of Virgo and Pisces in your birth chart they will be strongly affected by this immense super deep energy of Sun equals self, Mercury equals communication, K2 equals past lives and karmas, Lilith equals what is stuffed down and denied in our unconscious and our shadow. Those all combine to express themselves 12 to 16 Virgo and wherever that aspects in your chart, in your consciousness, in your life. Very important to know. Well, the next point is about Mercury. Mercury starts September at 28 Cancer. In other words, it's progressing through the Gandanta that is there from Cancer to Leo. Uh, there's a Gandanta zone at every water to fire sign transition. So there's three of them. And they are zones of immateriality. And the deeper you are to the midpoint, the switch of sign, change of the point, the less supportive this world feels. But, <clears throat> but because Hinduism, like Tibetan Buddhism, is tantric, even the most awful faces of the divine and situations can be gateways to the divine. And so here, watch out what is happening with Mercury issues as Mercury goes through the Gandanta roughly 1st to 7th September. Uh, now Mercury enters Virgo on the 23rd of September, the sign it rules. So Mercury is super strong in Virgo, but the trouble is he's so critical there. You know, watch out that you don't start being so critical. It can so harm love and relationship. So just look at this example here where I decode planetary strengths. On the 30th of September, Sun's dignity is minus one. But Mercury's dignity, by utter contrast, is five out of possible five strength points. But you see... Mercury being so much stronger than the sun <coughs> means there is a loss of sun ego power in our lives. You see, the sun is the divine charioteer that drives the chariot of self and guides the horses and chooses the route forward, chooses the roadway. Well, Mercury is so much stronger than the sun. Be aware. Well, the next point is Venus in Virgo. Venus transits from 9 Virgo on September the 1st to leave Virgo on the 17th of September and then enter Libra on the 18th of September. Now, Venus is so debilitated in Virgo, basically because well, one of the reasons is critical energies ruin love and relationships. But the other thing specific to this Venus transit through Virgo 
is that Ketu the South Node is transiting Virgo at this time and Ketu can have a dreadful effect on Venus. It can create meltdowns in relationship and it can introduce difficult love related past life karmas. So that's why I said, although there's some real gems in September astrology, there are some very difficult, messy energies and you need to hear them. You don't need to fall into the trap. Um, so Venus in Virgo impairs our ability to form and sustain relationships. Venus in Virgo creates misunderstandings and conflicts in relationship and can trap us into chronic dissatisfaction in relationship. We don't want that. Special sharing and deliberate caring agreement is needed between a couple at this time to compensate for the problems of Venus transiting Virgo and to be aware that past life scripts and commitment difficulties could well arise with one or other of the partners. Don't get dragged down into all this. Agree to work together at this difficult time. <clears throat> Note, by the way, that Jupiter's trying Venus. It's exact on September 13th. So avoid overspending or overindulgence. But as I said, on the 18th of September, Venus enters Libra and Venus rules Libra. Everything changes. Note that Venus's dignity is minus three on the 17th of September when in Virgo. But it jumps to plus four out of possible five when Venus enters Libra on the 18th of September. So during the... Venus in Virgo troubles, make a conscious memory that on the 18th all that energy passes and quite a charming energy of love replaces it. Okay, Mars. Now the thing is that Mars transits Gemini all September. On September the 1st, Mars is at 3 Vedic Gemini. On September 30th, Mars is at 20 Gemini. Mars remains in Gemini until October the 20th. Now, the important thing is that Gemini is, of course, ruled by Mercury. So, oh no, Mars transiting there can create an energy for rows and spats and arguments. Fighting, sharp speech, storms, turmoil, rage, communication breakdowns, impatience, scatter of mental focus, insomnia and anxiety. You have been warned. Be prepared. Agree to cooperate with the others in your life to make a pact of avoiding communication and anger issues getting out of hand. Be aware that that is the risk of what can happen with Mars in Gemini in September. Now, just to say that I am bringing out um, separate videos and blogs for the September new and full moon, so watch out for those. <clears throat> the new moon is on September the 2nd in the USA, September the 3rd here in Ireland, <clears throat> and moon and sun are at 16 Leo in Purva Palguni Nakshatra ruled by Venus. The full moon is a lunar eclipse on the 18th of September with Moon at 1 Pisces and Sun at 1 Virgo. The moon's at Purvabhadra Nakshatra ruled by Jupiter. Sun is at the friendly, in the friendly Uttara Palguni Nakshatra ruled by the Sun. So basically, to get a reading from me, go to my Star Wheel Astrology website. And definitely, if it applies, check out the healings offered worldwide by my wife Maggie Pashley. Again, if it applies to you, see our wonderful 
worldwide dating site for those on a spiritual pathway. It's called Love Star Dating. Subscribe to my YouTube channel called Michael Keneally, or one word. Subscribe to my Star Wheel Astrology blog and join our Star Wheel Astrology Facebook page. So I hope this description in part two of the <coughs> background energies has been helpful. They're so important to know. And knowing them deeper and understanding will mean that we're less likely to mess up the super wonderful spiritual gem energies I presented in the part one video. So all blessings and success to you. Thank you.